My dudes, what's happening, man? It's Trent, and I got a problem, man. Uh, maybe you do too, okay? I'm the type of an artist that I start project after project. I wanna do another comic. I got another video idea. I got 30 video ideas started on my desktop. Which one's gonna get done? I don't know, like, this is, it's piling up, man. I'm the same way with a lot of things, and so I'm trying something different, and I wanna share this process with you, because I think it might help you to focus as well. And hopefully, hopefully, together, we can get some stuff done, okay? So let's dig into it. And as I like to do, I've hidden codes for 40% off of anything in my Gumroad channel. Uh, those codes are somewhere in this video if you can find them and get that sweet discount. Well, if you're at all like me, then you probably got a lot of creative debt. That's what I call it. It's basically just a lot of unfinished stuff that you started and you'd love to get around to someday, but yeah, then you get distracted by starting another thing. And you look at your notes and you look at all your stuff and it's just overwhelming. You don't want to do any of it, so you just play video games. You know, all of your projects, half finished projects, half scribbled notes, half scribbled sketches, maybe you got a pile of unfinished paintings and you're thinking, how can I even give the, the proper amount of time and care to each individual one? Because I got to jam it out so I can finish all of my other backlog of projects that I've got started that I don't know how the heck I'm going to finish and it's like how do I even focus on top of on top of other life stuff right like uh like uh, taking care of bills or taxes nobody wants to be doing these things I want to be starting another project man I want to start another painting so it ends up where you got 20 or 30 different things started but nothing gets done so if you can relate to that then we're going to solve it right here and now by eliminating that which does not matter you got too much stuff you got too many projects you got too many ideas you gotta cut it all loose man and I know what some of you are thinking oh boo hoo you know spoiled brat problems yeah well uh, there's a thing that happens it's called decision paralysis this is a psychological phenomenon if you give somebody only three options uh, it's easier for them to decide than if they have 30 options see back in 2000 psychologists sheena yengar and mark lepper published a remarkable study this study showed that when people were presented with 24 different flavors of jam it was harder for them to choose than if they were only presented with a smaller number so in that way having more options is actually not better well the same thing happens with books if you buy books that you don't finish uh, before you even finish the last book and it's true with movies if you're buying more movies before you finish the last movie for instance or if you got a, a massive my list on your netflix you know it can feel overwhelming like what do i even watch well the same is true with art the same is true with your projects of things that you want to get done and if you're like me before you've even finished your current painting you're already starting on the next one you got another sketch going and before you know it you got a massive pile of unfinished drawings and when you look at that pile of unfinished drawings, you just feel guilt or you don't feel like you want to deal with it. You got decision paralysis. It's an uh, embarrassment of riches, as they say. And ironically, the solution is to cut some things out to minimize, to, to reduce the clutter. Okay, so some of you are nodding your heads. You're like, yeah, okay, I, I get it. I know the problem. I have this problem too. Okay, so what's the solution? Trent, get to the point. Here are a few things that I'm doing to eliminate some of the things that are just piling up or at least put them into an archive for so they're not begging for my attention at all time. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be decluttering everything around me. So that means decluttering bookshelves. That means decluttering my desktop on my laptop where I, it's my primary workstation. It means decluttering my projects and my list of video ideas, for instance. It means turning down jobs or opportunities that are maybe a distraction that are keeping me from achieving some of the things that are higher priority on my list. So that means I have to create a little bit of a hierarchy of what's important, what needs to get done now. And are there jobs that I'm doing that are just a feeling of obligation because I'm, I owe somebody else or because I'm agreeable or for instance, you know, these are things that you've got to decide for yourself. But here are a few things specifically that I'm doing and how to decide what gets moved up in the priority list and what maybe gets put into an archive. Don't think of them like you're canceling projects. Think of them like you're putting them on ice. You're putting them in the cryo sleep, man, the archives. So when you finish something, you can go back into your archives and pull up something that is already gonna have something started, like a rough sketch already started. The system that's been working for me is a flashcard system. So I write down each individual thing onto a flashcard. So for instance, I have 50 different video ideas. 
and I have 50 different uh, painting ideas that I need to do. So I write each one onto a flashcard and then I only have one or two of them out at any given time. So the only ones that I'm looking at when I sit down at my work desk every day are the two that are on my plate for that day. Everything else is in the shuffle, man. And, and how I'm deciding what gets moved up is based on one, whether I have a very clear idea of what I wanna do with it or whether it's really required by deadline. For instance, I put out videos every Friday and sometimes more. So I, I gotta get my videos done. <laughs> so the ones that have the clearest view of what I wanna do with it, uh, the closest thing to a finished script, for instance, that's the one that's gonna get my attention. The others are out of sight, out of mind. I don't even have to think about them if they're not on my desk. And if I come up with another video idea or another painting idea, I put that on one of those flashcards and I put it into the, the shuffle, the archive. As I finish content, as I finish a video idea, for instance, I take that card and I throw it away. And then I go back into the archive and pull up the next one. The point is that I don't have 15 of these cards out on my desk at once. No, I've just got the one or two. That way it's the only ones that I'm giving my attention to until they are finished. You have to practice finishing things. Even if it's not perfect, at least it's done. And you can evaluate how you can make the next one better. Don't get caught up in that trap of ripening on the vine uh, because you may end up just never releasing anything at all. As a matter of fact, I was talking to my dentist about this just the other day. Uh, her daughter wants to be an artist and a writer, but she has the same problem. She can't seem to finish a project. And the value of this is so powerful because once you finish a project, even if it's not as good as you would like it to be, you can truly evaluate how you could make that better moving forward. In fact, when I start writing a novel, I always write the ending and the beginning first so that I know that this thing is gonna get done. So our goal here is to not have everything demanding our attention. So another thing that you can do is to delete distractions from your desktop and using the same psychology as the flashcards that I was talking about, you can actually go through your whole desktop if your desktop just looks like it's got 300 different little icons on it, that you're not gonna be able to focus on any one thing. So get that down to like three icons on your desktop. And if there's some way that you can archive your old projects or archive things into something that's not on your desktop, for instance, maybe somewhere on an external drive, something you have to plug in, you have to go through your drawer and plug it in to pull up new projects or projects that are in your archive before you can actually give them your focus, that might be a good solution for you. If you've got folders full of like inspirational art or reference images, get those out of there, man. You don't need to be distracted with good sci-fi references if you're working on a fantasy painting. Uh, have your projects based on a folder so that when you're focusing on that task, all the info you need is right there. Yeah, it's accessible, but you don't have 13 other or 50 other projects that are begging for your attention as soon as you open up your laptop. And for me, I open up my laptop every single day. That is my workstation. So if it's right on my in front of me, that's the one I'm gonna tackle. Video games that I'm not playing right now are going to get archived into my closet or my garage. Uh, art books that I'm not currently looking at are going to get put into storage. It's only going to be the small handful of maybe three to five items at any given time that are going to be pulling for my attention. And ideally they would be related to each other. So that's another thing to consider. Are there tasks or projects that are related to each other that you can sort of combine? So like for instance, the painting that you're watching me do uh, for this video, because I do videos on YouTube, I also am working on my art book so that by the end of the year, I will have a nice collection of awesome Twilight Monk art. I also record real-time videos for every one of my paintings, and I make those available in my Gumroad box sets of tutorials. Furthermore, some of the paintings that I'm doing are going to be used in an indie game for Twilight Monk. So there are four birds with one stone. So find ways to get multiple outcomes out of every task. A lot of this ties in also with uh, a minimalist movement that happened several years ago by a person named Marie, And her whole thing was about eliminating these unnecessary things. You would look at the items that you have, and if they truly brought you joy and inspiration, you keep them around. But if they've served their purpose, you can let them go. This allows you to fully appreciate and completely embrace this, the fewer things that you have. Sometimes in our modern culture and society, we get inundated with this idea of constantly wanting new, fresh, 
brand new experiences and brand new things to add to our collection. But then we end up feeling overwhelmed by them. And it's like Tyler Durden said, man, the things you own end up owning you. And some of my art projects, and maybe some of your art projects have served their purpose. And maybe it's okay to let them go. It doesn't have to feel like a to-do list. Maybe you can sift through your collection of movies or video games or art projects as we're talking about in this video and just kind of make that decision to put it away. Not forever, just put it away. Like put it away in storage and maybe you'll come back to it after you've uh, completed some of your other projects. But maybe after you've made all of your flashcards, it still feels like a mountain. Maybe it still feels like a huge task list. Well, how can you eliminate a few more of these ideas and tasks? Well, there are a few things that you can uh, consider. Uh, one is the scope, you know, uh, is this a, a massive undertaking that's gonna take you two years to do? Or is it something that you can just bang out because you're really close to the finish line? This is really difficult if you're kind of a perfectionist, you know, like me, and I can totally understand, but maybe there were a few things that you just got distracted from and they're really close to being done. Maybe you just need to put that cherry on top. Maybe you just need a couple more days to wrap up that, uh, that painting you had going last week or last month or last year. Maybe the scope of your project could be shifted down just a little bit. When I released Aikida a couple of years ago, I think it was 2019, that was my first indie game, solo developed indie game. And originally I wanted to make a big, massive Metroidvania, but I decided, you know, for a first game, uh, just spend three or four months and finish this thing and release it. And I'll tell you what, I'm really pleased with myself that I actually finished and released it. And having it finished allows me to evaluate how I can make the next one better. At some point you can start to hire people if your projects do start to make money, you can hire people to help you so that you're alleviating some of that burden. For instance, a director of a video game doesn't do everything. Like Kojima ain't out there writing lines of code and modeling and texturing characters. I don't think the guy even knows how to do those things. <laughs> the director doesn't do everything. So you need to find ways, if you can, to delegate. So if you're making a comic book, for instance, maybe you just need to find an inker to ink those pages for you or find a letterer to do the lettering for you. Maybe by delegating a little bit, you can finish those projects and then you're able to move on. And when they're done, you can put them down and you can move on to your next project in your list. Keep your goals reasonable. Keep them as things that you can actually accomplish. Don't like make a flashcard that says make an MMO. Like that's a $40 million project. If you don't have those resources, don't make that your task. Focus on things you can actually accomplish. Another factor you may wanna consider when deciding whether or not to eliminate a project is whether or not you need the money from that project. <laughs> you know, uh, If you're doing commissions, for example, yeah, that can be a distraction and you may decide to eliminate that uh, in order to focus on your, your uh, personal project, something that you really enjoy. But you may have to compromise on that and say, well, maybe I'll just reduce the number of commissions I take because they pay well. And if something is paying you well, Maybe that should be along the, the top of the, the priority list if you've got bills to pay. But maybe you can also organize a plan so that you don't need to do as many of those jobs. For example, uh, you know, if you paid down your house or lowered your cost of living, then maybe you don't need to take on as many distracting projects. So in summary, you will get more done by eliminating clutter. And that means streamline everything. So eliminate projects or archive projects that you don't have any intention of finishing in the short term. And that means going through every one of those items. So make a list. If you have several paintings, for instance, maybe uh, archive the ones that you just don't think that you're going to be getting to and make sure that you put the ones that you are working on, the, the small number, one or two of them, in front of your face, whether it's on your desktop or whether it's on a notepad uh, or note cards, for example, so that you can make a checklist of sorts, whether it's visibly something that you scratch off from a list or whether it's on note cards, this can really help you to eliminate the other items from your mind. They're not even on your mind. You'll get to them later, but these are your priorities. If you have an idea for something new, that goes on a note card and it goes immediately into the archives. So when you finish something, you destroy that note card or you scratch that item off of your, your list and then you go through your archives to decide, well, which one can I tackle next? Which one needs to get done soonest? Have I promised anything to my customers or to an employer? What's my priority here? And uh, that way, 
Essentially, we're just creating a budget so that if somebody comes along and says, hey, can you take on this project that's gonna take six months of all of your time? You can be like, no, I'm sorry. I have these items on my to-do list. These are the things that are actively in front of me. When I get that list down, then we can talk. So I myself have done this recently. I'm going through everything and I am cutting away projects that I just can't do. I can't do so much. I can't do everything. If you follow my Twitter, you already know I'm quitting all contract work for AAA games. I don't need to go into why other than to say it's been a long time coming and there are a lot of dream projects that I have just been stalling and putting off and it's about time. Uh, it's about time to finally give my focus to the things that are really more of what I want out of my life that's important. So Aquatic Moon, my art house, we are no longer doing any artwork for Blizzard, Riot, Epic, or Capcom, or Sony. We're no longer working on any big AAA things. I will be passing on any jobs that come my way to make room for you guys to take over. I'll probably post those jobs over in the Discord. I have big plans and things that I will be announcing, but currently my roadmap is pretty simple. I have to finish up a couple of things that I had promised. Uh, the things that are at the top of my priority is obviously YouTube. I'm gonna be here. Don't worry, dudes. This this uh, channel is one of my highest priorities, as are my tutorials that I create, such as my environment concept art workshops, skin workshops, etc. The second thing on the top of my priority list is going to be the World of Twilight Monk art book, which you're seeing a lot of me painting on right now throughout these recent videos. This will be my second art book. Uh, yeah, you can pick up the first one over on Amazon and don't forget to leave a review. Those reviews really help me and they keep me inspired to focus on doing more of this type of content. If you like the characters in the world, yeah, you can read the fiction, the illustrated novels uh, over there on Amazon as well. So dudes, that's it for me this week. I'm here every Friday to answer your questions about art and a career in art. So don't forget to leave those in the comments below and I'll see you guys next week. Ciao, baby. Oh yeah.